Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and we're looking at subject CT1 and chapter 15, stochastic interest rate models. And this is it. This is the final chapter, guys. So it's a little bit sad because we've come to the end of CT1, but also kind of happy that we've completed this journey together. And what a way to end the course off then to start it almost starts with subject CT3. So the stuff that we're going to be going through now kind of forms the core of CT3, this whole expected value and variance. And those are the two key ideas you need to know uh, for this chapter. You'll also come across um, in subject CT4, this word called stochastic. Um, and in subject CT8, you go into stochastic interest rate models in much greater depth and they get very hard. But luckily for us, in this chapter, they are kind of easy. It is just an introductory chapter, so the mathematics is not that difficult. There is a little bit of a tricky um, part of it, but we're going to talk about that, and we're going to see that it actually isn't that difficult. So, without further ado, let's just look at what this word stochastic means. Um, stochastic is just another word for random, or uncertain and this whole course we've been looking at um, the time value of money how money in the present value is worth more than money in the future and so you have to add on an interest component to balance the two values now that interest component that interest rate remember we looked in the previous chapter it can change that's what immunization was about it was protecting against interest rate changes and let me just, uh, I'm going to show you a picture quick that just shows how interest rates change as time goes by. And whenever something's changing with an unpredictability or with an uncertainty to it, actuaries get involved to model it. So let me just show you a quick picture of that. Oh, this was um, me <laughs> watching YouTube earlier. Yeah, very, it, yeah, South Africa lost to Japan uh, in, the, in the World Cup. We're still going to win the World Cups. It's just a group match, so it's not that important. We're still going to win. Um, but anyway, what are we talking about? Oh, yes, interest rates. So Bank of England, um, this is their interest rates, and they set this interest rate. So every country, that's why I kind of said interest rates are made up, because each country's government kind of just sets this rate, what they feel is best for the, their country's economic situation. Um, normally you have a high interest rate to combat um, inflation and you have a low interest rate to combat um, well to try and increase growth so a low interest rate increases growth and a high um, interest rate combats inflation and you can see this was a high inflation area this was the crash recently so they're trying to promote growth anyway that's that's not too important what we're looking at is how interest rates fluctuate how they change with time and as you've been seeing the calculations we've been doing can span anything from 10 to 20 to even 50 years which means interest rates are not going to be known so we know interest rates are going to kind of be stable um, in the next year or two but 10 years 20 years down the line they're going to be changing and this is where the actuary comes in and he's able to he or she is able to make um, accurate predictions on how it's gonna how it's gonna move. So, I mean, when we're looking at these random um, processes or these these stochastic things, there's two um, key concepts that we need to understand, and they're known as moments. There's the first moment and the second moment. You can keep going. I mean, there's there's an infinite amount of moments, and each moment tells you a little bit of information. But the first moment and the second moment give you the most information. The first moment, um, that talks about, it's, it's kind of like the average um, or the expected value. So, for example, if I had uh, a situation where the interest rate could either be 6% or 8%, the first moment, which is the expected value, would be 7%. Now, if I had another case where the interest rate could be 5%, or 9%, the expected value would also be 7%, but the second moment, which is the volatility or the variance, would be much greater, as there's a greater spread between 5 and 9 than there is between 6 and 8. And these are the two things that we need to look at and consider 
when we make our calculations and work out the answers for stochastic interest rate models. So, how do we do it? Now that we have a little bit of a background, how do we actually answer these questions to get the marks in the exam? The very first moment, it's shown by this symbol here, which is E, um, and enclosed in the brackets is the value that you want to find um, you want to find the expected value of. So what we want to do here is we want to find what is the expected value of the interest. And the way we do it is we, so in the one case, we insert 6% into our equation of value, we'd work out the answer, and then we multiply it by the probability that it would be, that the interest rate would be 6%. So in this case, if it's an even chance that it'll be 6 or 8%, we times it by 50%. We then add on another equation of value where we do the exact same thing but now we use 8% as our interest rate and then again we multiply it by the probability that that would be the interest rate which is 50%. We then sum these two values together and we get our expected answer. Now the other picture I want to just show you quickly is this picture here. So what this is showing you here is that the variance is equal to this formula which you can break down into e, ex squared minus ex squared over there. And that is the first moment squared and that is the second moment. So when you come to calculate the variance you only really have to calculate this value now because we already have this one uh, that we've calculated from calculating the average and we just square it. And this is normally the tricky one to do. So let's go back to our maths. So you can see, what we're doing here is we're now having our interest rate uh, squared and it does make it a little bit trickier, but if you, if you do the maths, if you go first principles, if you write it out just for the first few times that you do it, you'll see that it's not too bad. It does start getting a little bit more complicated where instead of just um, fixed cash flows, you're now looking at something like annuities and you now have to take the squared value of an annuity, it gets a little bit more complicated. But, like I said, if you follow the first principles, break this formula up into what it actually is, then square it, work from first principles, and you can calculate it. So, don't get intimidated too much by it. If you ever get confused by the maths, just tear it apart, back to its basic principles, and work from there. Remember, these are summary figures. They're used to make the maths look pretty and they group values up. If you're struggling to work with them, break it out. It will take more time, so when you do write the exam, you must be comfortable by working in the actuarial notation, but just getting to grips with it, break it apart. So if you comment like, Mark, I don't understand what's going on here, I'm going to tell you, break apart these functions into their, their first principles. And then you know, once you basically have these two figures, the expected value is equal to this one and the variance would be equal to this one minus that one squared. <coughs> okay, so when we come, I mean, if we look here, we've got varying interest rate model. Interest rates change from year to year, so a single payment at time one at time n. Okay, so in the previous case, what we were looking at is going forward the interest rate could either be 6% or it could be 8%. So for the next 10 years it's either 6% or it's 8% and it's for the entire duration the interest rate is the same and that's how we did our calculations uh, above. Now we get a little bit more complicated where we say that every single year it could be a little bit different. So before it was either 6% for 10 years or 8% for 10 years. You can get the situation where the first year is either 6 or 8%. The second year is different. It can also be 6 or 8%. So you can have 6, 6, 8, 6, 8, 8, 6, 8. You can get this varying pattern. And so the maths does get a little bit more compli complicated. So what you're going to do here is you're going to link um, the values together in order to calculate the expected value. And... I know I, don't, I try always say not to learn the formula, but in this case, this is the exception. You can learn this variance formula uh, because it is kind of complicated. 
Try to work it out if you have time, but otherwise just learn this guy off by heart to calculate the variance when your interest rate changes from year to year. And then, yeah, again, you can see it gets a little bit more complicated when you're bringing in the actuarial notation. Um, but yeah, it's kind of just swapping in, swapping out. And like I said, it is, it is difficult, this part, so maybe do a few examples of it. And then, I mean, the last part, this log normal distribution of varying interest rates, it looks very intimidating. The first time you look at it, you're like, what? What's going on? But if you've done CT3, this is actually very, very simple stats. What you're saying is that my interest rate uh, follows a log normal distribution and that the rates are independent, which means this year does not influence next year, which in reality is wrong, but it's a nice simplifying assumption to make the maths easy. Also, interest might not follow a log normal distribution. Um, it might follow a more complicated distribution, but you can see this is stuff that you deal with in subject CT8 and it gets way more crazy. Here, you're just doing a very simple um, normal distribution calculation and you kind of yeah, you learn these formulas you plug the values in and you get the answers out you can see I didn't actually that's like the end of my notes so if you guys are struggling because I know I have gone a little bit quickly on these final two but what I wanted to show in this video was just the basics that interest rates can vary um, they can vary from year to year and these are the ways that we can handle it mathematically. It is very important that you tackle these questions um, and try to figure them out for yourself. Try, and that's, that's what I've been trying to do um, throughout this entire course, is I don't want to spoon feed you guys the answers, um, just say, like I kind of did over here, where I was like, just use that formula. That's the exception. But other than that, I want you guys to to think because that is what an actuary is it's you're a thinking human being um, you're taking all these mathematical uh, properties all these formulas all these concepts all these ideas but you're not just applying them blindly you're thinking the problem through and you're using them to aid you as you find your solution and that's what you need to do with this chapter as well you need to Hopefully I've explained why this is important and I've introduced you to some of the maths, but it's up to you now to tackle these questions, use the mathematics and try and figure out why the answer is what it is. Go through each step individually, maybe talk to yourself um, in, you know, use words, not necessarily numbers, to explain what you're actually doing and work out the logical steps. And I feel that's it's much harder to do that, it's much more difficult to do that, but that's going to give you much more benefits than if I just go through a whole bunch of numerical examples. Remember, this is actuarial science, your brain is supposed to suffer, you are supposed to not just get it at the first uh, glance, you are supposed to wrestle with this material, fight with it, uh, attempt the question up to five times until you get it right, so have patience and yeah, give it your best. But like, I, like as always, if there are some big questions that you want to ask, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. And if there is enough demand for a certain aspect, I will maybe consider doing an exam question. I don't want to, but if you guys need it, I'll get that done for you. So yeah, let me know in the comment section below and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, Feel free to subscribe. I mean, I am going to be making some more videos. Um, I want to do just a few like top 10 study tips and a few other fun videos. And then I'll probably continue making subject CT4 and then I'll go into CT3 and we'll see how it goes from there. So yeah, please do subscribe, um, like the video, share them with your friends and let me know in the comment section what type of videos you want to see. But otherwise, best of luck for the exam, guys. And remember, don't worry. Don't, you know, don't worry if you fail it. I mean, you can write these exams twice a year. It's not the end of the world. Don't stress, don't stress out about it. But do give it your best um, so that you can qualify as quickly as possible. Thanks, guys, so much for watching. And I hope to see you in my next video. Cheers.